Three statisticians went out hunting and came across a large deer. The first statistician fired but missed by a meter to the left. The second statistician fired but also missed by a meter to the right. The third statistician didn't fire but shouted in triumph, on the average, we got it. So we're actually going to work as a team uh, to try and determine the average area of some rectangles. So on the back of our notes on our second sheet, if you turn over the page, you end up seeing, and this is for the people that missed the class, you end up seeing this sheet of 100 random rectangles. And I say, oh, look at it for a few seconds and tell me what you think the average area is. I'll say, oh, okay, I don't know, 10, whatever. So then what we did is we recorded the guesses from our class. So I had a class of 18 kids. Hopefully there are 18 guesses here. We'll see. And on then we made a little dot plot of them. Okay, so our estimates actually went out. It goes off the screen because even though my number line only went up to 20, some of my kids thought, oh, maybe it's higher. And so I had a guess of 28, a guess of two guesses of 57. And that is represented by the X off to the side here. And we're thinking, okay, is that really fair? Can you really have a good estimate of the size of the rectangles just by, you know, eyeballing it? And we thought, you know what? It'd be a lot. We could find the actual average by doing a census and adding up all the areas and dividing by 100. But who wants to do that? That's too much work. Maybe we could just take five uh, rectangles in there and add their areas up and average them, and that might give us a better picture. So we had the students go ahead and pick five rectangles from the sheet that I showed you and put down the areas of those. So I polled some students. One student picked rectangle 13, and on the sheet, uh, the area 16. So we, it was like a 4 by 4 the next one, student had rectangle 26 with an area of 12. Then we had rectangle 15 with 9, 45 of 10, and someone picked rectangle 21, which has an area of 1. So when I average all of these, I got 9.6. So I put down 9.6 with my guesses, and I recorded. So this was just my survey in the class to get these. But I had them each pick out five rectangles and then average their areas. So this time we only have one number that goes off the scale. So, and also to make my dot plot a little easier, I'm going to round to the nearest integer in this case. So here we go. We had a, we range from seven to 14 plus this outlier at 50, you know, 51. So if I compare this dot plot, this time when we use judgment, we do see that it's a little tighter than the other one although we still have one outlier that's off the number line. Okay, so um, how, how good is our estimate? Well, the problem is there's actually some bias here, and I'm not going to tell you where it's coming from yet. All right, so in statistics, we're trying to eliminate our preferences, and we use randomization for that. Here is a, a part of a random number table and the day that I had this class, it was on the 11th. And basically, normally on a random number table, you just pick some line number to use. Usually your teacher will tell you which one. And then you use all the digits on that line. So you randomly select which line to use, or your teacher tells you which line to use. You've got to, uh, for our example, we use the 11th because that's when our lesson was. All right. Then you have to figure out how many digits you need to use because you can see I'm using line 11 and I have all these digits. Do not worry that there are different columns here. You're just going to go in order. The only reason these have little spaces in here is for readability so you don't get lost so easily. Now we have 100 rectangles and if I used one digit, I'd get rectangle 2, rectangle 8, rectangle 9. That won't work. What if I used three digits? I could do rectangle 289. Oh, that's higher than my 100. That won't work. Um, well, but maybe the next three are okay. 186, still too high. 
What if I just used two digits, rectangle 28, rectangle 91, rectangle 86? That's sounding better. So we're going to represent 100, which is the only three-digit number we have, by the digit 00. So if I have two zeros in a row, like if I had those two and they showed up on the rectangle, that would be rectangle 100. All right. So we write down the sets of digits that we get and be sure to ignore repeats. Um, I don't know if I see any repeats in here with doubles, but if I did see them, um, if I had 28 and then I had 28 again, I wouldn't sample rectangle 28. So here are the five rectangles I picked, 28, 91, 86, 95, and 78. None of those are repeats, so I don't have to ignore any. All right, and there you go. Now, there are other ways. This is from a table. So back in the old days before technology, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, we had books and tables and we would look up random, uh, uh, they actually people would be paid to generate these random number tables. And they could do it with things like die or some other device. Well, um, now we have technology like the TI-84 and I'll show you how to do that on the, you can actually generate random numbers there. So you press math and so you see the math screen, scroll to PRB and then uh, scroll to five rand int, ignore the phone. Then you enter the minimum number you want to use. All right. And in this case, our minimum number is one. All right. Then you're going to press comma to separate it. And that's just about the seven on the TI-84. And then enter the max number you want to use. All right, so I have one comma 100. And in this case, it gave me the random number of 95. Now, if you want to do more than one random number, say, oh, do four, you can actually do comma four. Um, and it will uh, go ahead and generate four different integers. Well, and, but there might be repeats, so make sure that you ignore any repeats. All right. Now, there is also lots of resources on the Internet. Uh, in this case, this is from random.org. I love to use it to randomize lists for myself, and you can use it to do integers. So here, this is how it shows up. I don't need 100. I only need 5, and they already have it from 1 to 100, and that's fine. So I hit get the numbers, and there you go. So there are five other random numbers. All of these are pseudo random, by the way, so they're sort of random. They're good enough for what we're doing, though. So I'm going to write down here when you're doing the lesson, if you generate your own rectangles, you would actually put in the numbers you get using either the calculator or this website and put in the values. But since I don't know what you're going to generate, I'm going to use the ones from the table that we generated. So we have, whoops, you don't need to see the video again. Here we go. Rectangle 28, 91, 86, 95, 78. And now I'm getting a much lower average of 4.6. Well, how does it compare to your other averages? For some of you, uh, it could be higher than what you got. It just depends on what you got because there's randomness, right? But for most of you, I have the feeling it's a little smaller than the previous number you had. All right. So these were the other averages that we pulled from the class. And I just rounded them to the nearest integer to make it easier to put them on the dot plot. And there they are. Now, if you look at this, what's going on? Well, I can tell you that the actual true average, and I'm not going to tell you what it is on this video, you have to come to class to find out, um, is in this dot plot. All right, it is a decimal value. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's definitely in this dot plot. And this dot plot is tighter than the other one, right, than both of them. And you'll notice the values are shifted lower. Why is that? Well, when we're picking rectangles, most of us tend to go towards the bigger ones for some reason. We all have biases, and we may not even be aware that we have biases. But if I were to send a student to go survey people in the cafeteria, they tend to pick people that they're comfortable with, you know, people who that's more like yourself. So if you're a freshman, you're not going to go ask the seniors to do the survey because those are seniors and you're freshmen. And seniors probably would avoid freshmen too. So um, the main point is, is that if we are picking samples, do not use your judgment. 
because it's sad to say, as much as we want to say we're unbiased, we do have biases we're not aware of. All right. So if we were to take a census and average the area of our uh, every rectangle in our population, the parameter th for the average is, and uh, come to class and I'll tell you. All right. So which dot plot was closest to the actual value? It was the random sampling. And the reason was is that it eliminates sampling bias. Again, this occurs when one part of the population is ignored or favored. So we kind of ignored the little tiny one unit rectangles and we favored the larger ones. But do those little one unit rectangles have an influence? Absolutely. If you had, say, three tests with a 90 on it and then you had a test with a 20, that 20 is going to pull the average down. Same thing with these little one unit rectangles. So what ends up happening is that your result is being over or underestimated. So again, what kind of bias do we show? We showed a sampling bias. We favored the larger rectangles and overestimated the area.